My wife read your book. I didn't answer that. No, my wife read your book and she said, what an attractive man. How do you deal with female adulation? That's why I covered myself. No, no. <laughs> I'm curious to know. Uh, the thing is, uh, this is a, a very human ailment that all the time we have to recognize people by their gender. No other creature has this problem. All other creatures on the planet, when their hormones rise, they know who is female, who is male, otherwise they're just there. Human beings have got this ailment. Twenty-four hours, three-hundred-sixty-five days, they can't think of anything other than body parts. <laughs> so I don't see any females or males, I just see wonderful people, so I have no issues. Okay. There's a very intriguing people make these great prophecies about world coming to an end, etc. Will the world come to an end in 2012? So all those people who firmly believe that the world is going to come to an end the coming year, what date do they know? We are in September 20... Oh. No, no, do they know what date it will come? No, no, no oh. date mentioned. It, there was a date mentioned last year. Okay. Uh, we've so, crossed that, thank God. What I would tell them is, uh, we have a lot of work to do. I have lots of work to do. 2013, 1st January, because anyway 2012 the world is going to end. On 2013, 1st January, all your wealth and money and everything, please write it to Isha Foundation, there's work to do. <laughs> the world is anyway going to end, what are you going to do with your money? So, they… they… for them this is just an entertainment. They don't believe enough to just give away everything and get ready. <laughs> they just want to play with it. All vain minds are always looking at prophecies. They are looking at predictions because they don't have a plan for their life. Those who are incapable of making plans always fall back on predictions and prophecies. Yeah, but… Uh, I'll just request to give me two percent of that money that goes to you, our foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you named uh, your foundation Isha Foundation? I, I, I have no idea. The name? You mean? The name Isha Foundation. The word Isha literally means uh, that which is in charge or that which is the source of creation or unmanifest or formless divinity is referred to as Isha. If you give it a form, it becomes Ishwar. So, the yogic system is not looking at form. We are not against forms. We can use forms as a part of our growth. But essentially, the existence, the whole existence if you look at it, not a single piece of creation, not a single atom in the existence can happen without the hand of the creator in it. So. The forms are there, every form can be seen as divine, but essentially it is formless. So to attain to that, the yoga is the method to attain to that. So right now as you sit here, this very body was created from within, so the source of creation is very much within you. So to attain to that state is the fundamental goal, so it is Isha Yoga and Isha Foundation. Okay. Do you pray? Till now I haven't. I so have not had the you, need to pray. Do you believe that there is a God? Let's come to this. Before we handle God, let's handle belief first. Mm -hmm. Why do you believe something? One believes something because they are not sincere enough to admit that they do not know. There are only two ways to be. Either you know something or you do not know something. But whatever you do not know, when you bullshit yourself, it's called as belief. Instead of simply admitting, I do not know, you want to believe something. Somebody believes there is God, somebody believes there is no God, both are in the same boat. 
they think they are different, but both of them are not straight enough to admit that they do not know. What is the problem in seeing what I do not know as I do not know? They have a problem because they do not understand the immensity of I do not know. I do not know is a tremendous possibility. Only if you see I do not know, the possibility of knowing arises within you. If you see I do not know, the longing to know will come. If the longing comes, seeking will come. If seeking comes, the possibility is alive in your life. Everything that you do not know, if you believe, you're destroying the very possibility of knowing. So coming to God, <laughs> there are various kinds of beliefs across the world. Mm, it's like this, there were two young boys, very energetic. When young boys are very energetic, they tend to be constantly in trouble, you know. So these two kids are always in trouble, two brothers. The parents are very embarrassed that the whole neighborhood is discussing their children. They want to fix them. It's easy to reproduce, but you don't know how to fix your children, do you <laughs> So they decided to take them to the local parish priest. They decided to take the younger boy first because together they are strong. They took the young boy, made him sit in the priest's office and they left. The priest walked in, with his long robes he walked up and down, creating the necessary drama, you understand? Mm. <laughs> because drama is needed for effect. Absolutely. So he was setting up… We are on up. the stage. <laughs> He was setting up the situation and the little boy was doing the ping-pong act, watching the priest moving around. And in mid-stride, he worked out a strategy. If I remind this little fellow that God is within him, all his mischief will go. This is the whole problem. People who have never raised children, they have fabulous ideas about how to do it. <laughs> People who have raised children, they know no damn idea works. If you have the love and commitment, you wait out the problems, otherwise you suffer. <laughs> That's all there is. I, I… but I think maybe when people are enlightened, they don't think that there is a God existing. No, no. There are people who are not enlightened. There are people who… who… who are… No, who don't have enough money to sort of… they have to depend on somebody. Uh, they I say that… Oh, uh, Let me finish the joke. Sorry? Let me finish the joke. Okay. My problem is that I can't hear you what you are saying, there is something with, oh, the, okay. with the speaker… The, the monitors, please, uh, if you can do something. No, I need to do something about this because I'm not able to hear what you are saying. Okay. So, um, I don't know how do we go about it. Uh, some speaker has to turn this side so that I can hear what exactly are you saying. So, is there anybody from the technical team who can do Stand that? Turn the music monitors, this side, please. Yeah, is it good? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So the priest worked out a strategy mm. how to get the mischief out of this boy. He mm. thought if he reminds him God is within him, all the mischief will go. Mm. So he stopped mid-stride and in a booming voice he said, Where is God? Mm. The boy looked bewildered, mm. looked all over the office because if God is, he must be somewhere in the priest's office. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, then the priest saw the boy not getting the point. Hmm. So he leaned on the table, he wants to give him a clue. So pointing at the little boy, he asked, where is God? The boy looked even more bewildered and looked under the table <laughs> Then the priest thought, okay, he is not getting it, he wants to give him a proper clue. So he walked around the table, came to the boy, tapping on the little boy's chest. He asked, where is God? He's telling him it's here. <laughs> The boy just got up and bolted out of the room, mm. ran to the place where his elder brother was mm. and he said, we are in real trouble mm. <laughs> The brother asked, why, what happened? He said, they lost their God and they think we did it <laughs> So, uh, there are belief systems and belief systems and belief systems. But at the same time, the idea of God is universal. Why this has come is, see the moment you're born, you look around, there is so much creation. Mm. You need an explanation. 
So you look at your mother thinking she could have done it. Well, she delivered you but she can't do the planet, you know. You look at your father, he doesn't look like that. You look at many other adults, they don't look like that. So you need an answer. You ask somebody who's little larger than you. Instantly they say, there is somebody up there who is doing all this. But see, we are sitting in a round planet, aren't we? Are we? We're sitting in a round planet, not even in the North Pole, at a certain latitude and the planet is spinning. If you look up, you obviously look up in the wrong direction. Every time <laughs> you thought Uparwala and looked up, you're completely looking in the wrong direction. I don't know how many prayers went waste like this. <laughs> but at the same time, there is creation. There is something which is the source of creation. Because we are not able to nail it as to what it is, because we are human, we give it a human form. If we were buffaloes, I'm sure we would have thought it's a big buffalo for sure. Because we are human, we think it's a big man or a big woman or whatever. So, it is perfectly all right for people to create a god. This is the thing about this culture. Here we have thirty-three million gods and goddesses mm. because this is the only culture which understood God is our making. There's something called as Ishta Devata. You can create your own god today. If you do, if you can look at all the existing gods, if you don't like them, you can make your own god, a tree in your garden, a rock in your garden, your mother, your wife, anybody you want or whatever you want. You like this vessel, you can make this your god. Nobody thinks anything weird about it in this country because we understand this is our making. After all, in every piece of creation, the hand of the creator is there. Whatever you can relate to, you use that, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, that's why we worship stones. We… we… we want no, to… No, we don't worship stones. We worship the source of creation in the stone, yeah, which is a piece of creation. we also want to have the… I don't want to argue on this. So, do you think or are all our epics… Mahabharat, Ramayan, Shankar, Ram, Sita, they are fake? No, they were historicity. Okay. There are buildings to prove that they were there. It's still in dispute. Mm. The dispute is on means they were definitely there, isn't it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kiranji, namaskar. <laughs> no. Uh, I will still want to probe a little further on this topic. We have a major mandir, masjid issue, Ayodhya issue, etc., etc. We are still fighting about that. So, why is all that fighting in fighting going on? If there is no God or if there is a belief… I did not belief. say that. No, you said there is a belief. People needed somebody yes, as a belief all the, of God. all the fight in the world is not between good and evil as people project it to be. All the fight in the world is between one man's belief versus another man's belief. Mm -hmm. If you saw, I really do not know, you wouldn't fight with anybody. Because you believe one thing and somebody believes something else, you're invariably go going to fight today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's just a question if you can manage them for some time, some day it'll spill out on the street. So, it is time. See, there is… A, there was a time when people worked with the instrument of belief, when the human intellect was in a certain way. Today it is time there is substantial intellect on the planet. Today it is time that we establish a certain level of seeking in a human being rather than just pumping him up with belief. Why do people believe you? Who said they believe me? This is a huge full house. No, no, they're looking… Everybody is They're clapping. sitting there evaluating every word that I say. I don't think they believe whatever I say. Mm. <laughs> to me, they look smart you, enough to understand I, and evaluate. I have performed in this auditorium. It's never been so full. <laughs> so there has to be some in their belief in you <laughs> which makes me, them look up at you. Why do they trust you? Why do they believe in you so much? Now let's take off the word belief. Yes, they trust me. Okay, I mean my word <laughs> may be different, but I think it is belief. Uh, do you think it is belief also?
Okay, just a minute. Uh, give me some. People who think over here that you have full belief in Sadhguru, raise your hands. There are some people, okay. Okay, Kiranji is also one of them. Do you think that Sadhguru has powers which you don't have? They can't what? ride a motorcycle like me, I'm sure. What are those powers? What makes you different? What makes you special? What makes you… what makes Pallavi Gupta writing a book on you and calling it you? What makes her change her life? What makes people over here… so many people I know who will not come to a function like this, they are here and they are here on time. What is it in you that makes you different? Because they know if they don't come on time, I won't let them in. But they dare not do that. <laughs> so what makes you different? Uh, also, I read in the book that at the age of nine or ten, you did… you wanted to find out things. You caught hold of snakes, you went into the darkness, you went into the cycle and you wanted to see whether the cycle… you fall down from a ditch. Today, if any ten-year-old child will start doing it, he said, I'm going to ape Sadhguru because he did that. I don't think any of the mothers are going to let you… Uh, le let them do that. <laughs> so what is it which is so special about you? It is not special. It is just that, you know, there was a time when we were promoting Isha Yoga, we used to print a brochure and it said, ordinary to extraordinary, okay? So they come day one, day two, day three, and we are teaching them some basic fundamentals of their life that they have missed <laughs> for sure, simple yeah. things. And then they asked Sadhguru, you said you will become extraordinary. We thought we'll become extraordinary or we will become special. I said, I never said you will become special, I said you will become extraordinary, mm -hmm. more ordinary than others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody is desperately trying to be special. When you don't try to be special, when you just live as life is, that you don't try to make yourself special because wanting to be special is coming from a certain an emptiness or a certain inadequacy within a human being. Where is the need to be special? Every human being is unique in his own way. If he tries to be special, he'll only end up aping somebody, he will not be himself. So, when the life is unique, every leaf on the planet is unique, every atom in the existence is unique, where is the need for you to be special? Being unique is better than being special, isn't it? So what is different? It is not a question of something being different, it is just this. See, the very nature of the existence is like this, the very nature of what's happening around you is like this. If you convert food, I mean if you convert mud into food, we call this agriculture. It's the same mud. Can you eat the mud? Can you take it on your plate and eat it? No. But if you wait, you put a seed and wait, the same mud becomes food and how we value it and eat it. But it is something else, but when you eat it, it becomes flesh and bone, it becomes you and it's so valuable for you and so many other people. So this is the way of the life. What is filth will become a flower. If only you mature it in the right direction, this flower, its beauty and its fragrance comes from filth. The more filth you put at the root, better the flowers will grow. So, the question is not about what is different, the question is not about what is special, the question is just about will you allow yourself to mature or will you let yourself just roll in filth? You have not yet answered my question <laughs> I… I feel that it's important for me to know. Yes, right what now… What is unique? about you. What you said is… is fantastic because that's what you… we all know means, no, I why, think. why is it that we've kept the flowers here, not a lump of earth? Simply because it's the same thing, but it's flowered, that's why you keep it here. That's all with me. So, you do admit that you are special? I have flowered, not special. Okay, I mean, let's not go by the words. Uh, you… you <laughs> wait… others are still waiting. So, They're when not... did you feel that you were different, unique, special, whatever word you want to choose. When did you feel 
at what stage of your life you felt that you wanted to share what you your knowledge with the people and what when did you feel that you want to tell the people that there is something ordinary and there is something extraordinary so it's like this when i was three and a half four years of age i realized one thing that i do not know anything i just do not know anything to such an extent if somebody gives me a glass of water i keep staring at this water for three four hours at a stretch if I find a leaf, I'm looking at it for six, seven hours at a stretch. If I sit up in the bed staring at the darkness, I sit like this the whole night. Now, what is happening with me is just this. We… I do not know what water is. I know that if I drink it, it will quench my thirst. But even today, do you know what water really is? You do not know. With all this science, have we understood even a single atom of creation in its entirety? We have not. So if I look at the water, I still do not know this, so I did not know how to shift my attention to something else, I would just be stuck with this. In this condition they sent me to school <laughs> Yes, I read that quote of about you going to the school <laughs> So I went and stared, <laughs> paying absolute attention to the teachers. <laughs> the kind of attention nobody would have paid them, total attention. Initially I heard their words, I understood what they were saying. After some time, I realized they were only making sounds, I was making up the meanings in my head. Even now, I'm only making sounds. Because you assume you know English language, you're making up the meanings, isn't it? I am trying to <laughs> if, <laughs> if I suddenly speak in Tamil or Telugu or something, you… I would be just making sounds as far as you're concerned. So once I realized that they're only making sounds, I'm making up the meanings, I stopped making meanings. I just looked at them. Suddenly the whole thing became so amusing, somebody going on making noises. Mm. So a big smile spread on my face. Mm. They were not amused <laughs> <laughs> So after some time I wouldn't even hear the sounds. I would just see all kinds of, you know, things, reverberations happening around the teacher, mm. after some time I wouldn't even see them, I wouldn't know that they exist but I would be still staring. So my schooling passed like this. Mm. So about uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago, this school where I studied over four decades ago, they came to invite me for their 125th anniversary. They were inviting all the prominent alumni <laughs> of the school. <laughs> So they came and invited me, I said, see, why me? Mm. Because I was not just a not good student, I was not even a student <laughs> I only went there when it was really necessary <laughs> So they said, no, our school has produced union ministers, our school has produced film stars, our school has produced cricket stars, you are the only mystic, you have to come <laughs> So I went. So I went and stood up in the quadrangle to speak the same oppressive buildings and uh, I looked at this classroom, suddenly this came back to my memory. I was eleven or twelve years of age, as usual I was paying absolute attention to the teacher <laughs> but I don't hear a word of what he says. So the teacher is trying to get a response from me. Thirty-five, forty minutes he tried very hard. He couldn't get a word out of me because I don't hear what he's saying. <laughs> Then he held me by the shoulders, shook me violently and said, you must either be the divine or the devil, I think you're the later <laughs> So till then my problem was, what is this, what is that, what is that, what is this, I knew nothing. But there was one constant, this is me, this was clear. Suddenly this guy confused me, is this divine, is this devil, what the hell is this? So I tried to stare at this, mm. I couldn't, so I closed my eyes and sat. When I just sat there staring, my dear father being a physician, mm. he started thinking I need psychiatric evaluation <laughs> <laughs> So the moment I closed my eyes and sat, the same people who thought I need psychiatric evaluation started saying he is becoming a yogi. Mm. I'm telling you the secret <laughs> Okay. I, I was staring at somebody, they thought, I need psychiatric evaluation, I was staring at something or somebody. The moment I start staring at myself, they said he is a yogi. 
So I started staring at myself with my eyes closed, looking, looking, looking for hours on end, days on end. Then, you know, I got into my youth and so many things happened, finished my university somehow and got into a business and one afternoon, I come from Mysore, where uh, at least at that time the tradition was like this. If we want to test our motorcycles, we ride up Chamundi Hill. Yes. You've been there? Yes. If you want to trek, we go up Chamundi Hill. Mm. If you want to have a party, we go up Chamundi Hill. Mm. If you fall in love, we go up Chamundi Hill. If That's you fall out, you have to go <laughs> <laughs> If you have something to do, you have to go up Chamundi Hill. If you have nothing to do, that's a place. Mm. So one afternoon I had nothing to do, so I rode up Chamundi Hill, parked my vehicle there and climbed up to a place. I know this place, the whole hill very, very well. So I sat on a rock, my eyes were open. I did not even close my eyes. Till that moment I always thought, this is me, that is somebody else. I have no issue with that somebody, but this is me, that's somebody else. Suddenly I did not know which is me and which is not me. What was me was just all over the place. The very air that I breathe, the rock that I sit on, the atmosphere around me, just everything was me. I thought this madness lasted for about five, ten minutes, but when I came back to my normal senses, four and a half hours had passed. For the very first time in my adult life, tears were flowing. Me and tears were impossible. I looked like this. My shirt is wet, to that extent tears are flowing. I've always been happy and peaceful, that's never been an issue. But every cell in my body was bursting with ecstasy. I did not know what hit me. When I shake my skeptical head and try to figure what's happening, the only thing that my mind could tell me is maybe I'm going off my rocker. The closest friends around me when I said, something is happening to me, look at me, they said, what did you drink, what did you take? This is all they could ask. Mm. So. I did not know what I hit, I did not know what happened to me. All I knew is I have hit a gold mine, I don't want to lose it. Mm. So if I sat down, I would be just simply dripping ecstasy like this. To a point, I think it's two minutes, seven hours, eight hours have gone. Once I sat down like this and I thought it's twenty-five, thirty minutes. And when I opened my eyes, there were garlands around me, people pulling my legs, you know, Indian mm. tradition. Mm. And somebody asking how to do his business, somebody asking when his daughters will get married. Mm. And I thought, what happened, where did these people come from? <laughs> I've been sitting there for thirteen days. I thought it's twenty-five, thirty minutes. Oh. Because I just lost sense of time. If I sit like this, time just flies off. You must know this, every human being knows this by their experience. See. On a particular day, if you are extremely happy, that day just flies like a moment. Correct, absolutely. If you are depressed, one day flies like an eon. Correct. Isn't it? So if you are absolutely ecstatic, you will see hours and days will slip like moments. You won't know any sense of time. And body will not know, mind will not know. It just… only people around you know that time has passed, but you just have no consciousness about time. So. Then I thought it's so simple, if I sit here, I'm bursting in ecstasy, what's the problem? I'm going to rub it off on the whole world. It's thirty years now, next year, 2012 is going to be thirty years. And see, I became like this. Mm -hmm. Still people are attached to their misery, they haven't given it up. Mm. We have touched a few million people. Today I can say that a few million people, if they close their eyes, tears of ecstasy will flow out of them every day. They're like that, millions of them. But millions are not still the world. So as a part of this, now I decided if people don't want to live in ecstasy, at least let them die in peace. So we brought in another level of spiritual process, very simple that everybody can do, one drop spirituality for everybody. At least it'll let them die in peace. How do you… Uh, that, that was a wonderful story what you just spoke about tears. How do you explain if… if you have… To, explain spirituality to a common man who does not understand. How do you explain what is it being spiritual? See, what is physical about you? You gather, isn't it? You gathered over a period of time. Yeah. What you gather can be yours. I'll not dispute that now. Okay. But it can never ever be you, isn't it? Okay, if you can simplify that for me. See, right now, as I'm speaking, I take this vessel and say, this is my vessel. 
all of them will think, oh, Sadhguru's got a problem. Hmm. But you know, I have a reputation of being wise, so they will wait. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> but after some time I say, this is me, then they'll say, let's go. <laughs> because this is a clear sign of insanity. <laughs> This is happening to you every day. Mm. See now that water, is that you? Mm. I feel like doing this <laughs> <laughs> That water, it's not you, but you drink it and it becomes you, mm. isn't it? So what is not you is becoming you. What is not you cannot become you. You believe it's become you. Okay. <laughs> How many… Sorry, you were about to say something. No, what you gather, you can claim it's mine, mm. but if you say it's me, it amounts to madness, isn't it? Mm. If I say this vessel is me, it amounts to madness. This vessel also was dug out of this planet, this also was dug out of this planet, isn't it? But you saying this is me, is it any better than me saying this is me? It's not any better. It's just that because we are in a democracy, the majority is with you, so you win. Hmm. Correct, absolutely. So, uh, why are people unhappy? Huh? Why are people unhappy? People are unhappy because they have not taken charge of the fundamental instruments of life that's given to them. It's like this. See, your system is made in such a way, this is the most sophisticated machine on the planet. Yes? Yes. The human mechanism is the most sophisticated complex machine on the planet. This is the gadget. People have not paid any attention to it. If you… you know, this, uh, it seems the cell phone companies in the country did a survey two years ago and they found, at least one company did I think, they found most people are using only seven percent of the capabilities of an ordinary cell phone. I'm not talking about a smartphone that you're using, hmm. the dumb phone. Hmm. They're using only seven percent of that. <laughs> if you're using only seven percent of an average phone, this gadget which produces that gadget, mm. what do you think is the percentage that you're using? It's way below one percent, I'm telling you. What it means to be human has not even been attended to. People have not even looked at it. They're just busy wanting to become something, not realizing who they are. <laughs> when the very source of creation is throbbing within you. There is an intelligence here, there is a competence here that if you give it a piece of bread, it will transform it into a sophisticated machine. When such an intelligence exists within you, when such a competence exists within you, what the hell are you trying to become? If even a drop of this intelligence enters your daily life, you will live magically, not miserably. Mm. So misery is not a product of Mumbai. The misery manufacturing machine is not in Mumbai. The manufacturing unit is in human mind because they have not made any attempt to understand how it works. They have not paid any attention. They are paying attention to everything around them, not to this one. But this is the greatest happening right now, isn't it? The greatest happening in your life is that you are alive and throbbing right now. Isn't this the greatest thing? Everything else is secondary, isn't it? I completely believe it. You see, in Greek theater, they said that fate, kismet played very important role in your tragedy. But in modern tragedy, they say human beings are responsible themselves for tragedy. There's nothing modern about it. In this culture, we always said your life is your karma. When we said your life is your karma, what it means is karma means action. Whose action? My action. So when I say life is your karma, we are saying your life is your doing. This is the only place on the planet where we have always told you, your life is your making. Your life is not God's making, your life is your making. When we say it is your karma, we clearly, clearly telling you your life is your making. So right now, your experience of life, whether you experience joy or misery, it happens from within you, isn't it? At least what happens within you must be determined by you, isn't it? What happens around you? Too many people are there, you have to take their help. But what happens within you must be determined by you. If you are miserable, what it means is, even what happens within you is enslaved to something around you. 
and people think it's normal. It's not normal, it's just insane. Only thing is you gather numbers. You understand? <laughs> you gather numbers in an asylum, the insane people look right. They're right, isn't it? See, it is all happening from within you. Both misery and joy happening from within you. If it's happening from within you, why is what you want not happening? If what you wanted happened to you, would you choose misery or ecstasy? I'm asking you. For sure, pleasantness or unpleasantness, at most pleasantness, at least for yourself. What you want for your neighbor may be debatable <laughs> What you want for yourself is the highest level of pleasantness, isn't it? If it's not happening, it is not because of this and that. It is just that your body is not taking instructions from you, your mind is not taking instructions from you, your emotions are not taking instructions from you. Nothing in this is taking instructions from you. When you say, this is my body, it is supposed to take instructions from you. When you say, this is my mind, it's supposed to take instructions from you. Can I tell you a joke? You're getting very Please, serious. please <laughs> On a certain day, Shankaran Pillai went to the bar okay. to drink with his friends. Mm. He just thought he'll just have one shot and go home. But you know, once they have a little bit of drink, they become timeless like yogis <laughs> So a few drinks happened, then he looked at the watch like this. It was 2 a.m. Mm. But the wife's rule at home is 8 p.m. He must be home. It's 2 a.m. He got really disturbed and he wanted to rush back home, so he thought he'll find a shortcut and started running through somebody's garden. Mm. And uh, because of unknown terrain and also drunk all the things inside, mm. he flipped over and fell into a rose bush face down, mm. got all scratched up, somehow found his way to the house. It took another twenty minutes to find the keyhole. He found that and just slowly crawled up and went into the bathroom and looked at himself, he looked a true mess. So he opened the medicine cabinet and wiped himself, took band-aid, fixed himself, then slowly crawled into the bed and slept. Morning eight o'clock, the wife brought a bucket full of cold water, threw it on him and asked him to wake up. He got up. She said, you fool, once again drinking. Mm. He said, no honey, since I promised you six months ago, I haven't touched a drop. Mm. She held him by the shirt, dragged him into the bathroom and showed him. All the band-aid was on the mirror <laughs> Now, this is the attitude people are taking. Right now, if this is feeling unpleasant, <laughs> you want to fix that one <laughs> No, no, no. If this is feeling unpleasant, you need to fix this one, not that one. There is a… there is a beautiful shairi on this, what you narrated just now, it's… I must share it with me. It says that, umr bhar yun hi galatiyan karte rahe, umr bhar yun hi galatiyan karte rahe, dhool chehre per lagi thi hum aayna saaf karte rahe. Thank God he admitted some things he does not understand. <laughs> it's a language, not the poetry <laughs> uh, I feel very proud to be an Indian and I'm sure a lot of people feel. But corruption bothers me and I'm sure you also spoke about it. How… do you think spirituality can help get rid of corruption to some extent? So let's understand this uh, corruption because it's a… it's a very important thing that everybody understands this properly in its right perspective. Rather than reacting against a bunch of people who are in an advantageous position, okay? <laughs> Why I want you to understand this is because for the first time in the history of independent India, the sixty-four years, that means two generations of people, 
they have at least fifty to sixty percent of them have had such a bad deal. Yes. Today you and me, we'll talk all this and go home and eat well. Correct. There's a whole bunch of people, almost four hundred million people who cannot do that. So, if we handle the next five to ten years right, we can change that. It's a tremendous possibility which is on our threshold. There's an economic possibility sitting on the threshold. If we conduct this right, we can change their lives. Those people who have not eaten properly, those children who are malnourished, which have the highest level of malnourishment, those who are not educated, those who don't have opportunities, those who are in that horrible social and economic pit, their lives can change in the next five to ten years if we conduct our act right. Every Indian should understand this. It is not just about economy means stock market. It is about hungry people who will have food on their plate. Economy does not mean stock market, economy does not mean uh, foreign cars coming into India, economy does not mean you wear better clothes or this and that. Improving economy means there will be no hungry children in the country, which is something all of us should do something about. And that possibility, that possibility is being jeopardized. Wherever I go, I speak to various economic and political leaders around the world, everybody says, we want to come to India, India is a big possibility, but the humiliation of corruption, we can't bear it. Because it's not just about money, they're willing to pay a percentage and get the work done, but the humiliation that they're put through on a daily basis, which we have gotten used to, they're not willing to go through that. They said, it doesn't matter if we don't do business, but we don't want to come there and go through all that rubbish. So, this possibility is being jeopardized by a handful of people or it is wrong to say it's a handful of people, it's a nation full of corruption. Correct. Because how many people in Mumbai streets, if there is no policeman will start at the red… stop at the red light? I think only ten percent will stop. So these ninety percent are corrupt people. If they make… if you make them the chief ministers and prime ministers, you know what they will do? So instead of just calling it by one bad word called corruption, we need to understand we as a society are trying to move from a feudalistic way of managing our lives to a democratic way. The democratic way has still not sunk into us. Suppose you become the chief minister of this state, your relatives and your friends will expect that you do something for them. If you become the chief minister and you're very strict and you, you will not yield to any nepotism, this, this, they'll think, what is this? He's my brother, he became chief minister, Just look at him, he doesn't look at me. He does not understand you're being straight, you're doing something for the country. So I am saying in our psyche, we are still feudalistic in nature, but we are trying to run a democracy. Democracy will not happen with an active sense of education as to what is democracy, what is the power of democracy, what it means, what is the responsibility of living in a democratic society? This has not been done. We just took democracy from the British and we think if they just put their oat and get their fingers dirty once in five years, everything is settled. No, we have not educated people. We are still a feudalistic society acting to be democratic. democratic. So many people, the corrupt people, the very, very corrupt people in the country, I have met them, they are bewildered, why are people upset, I'm only doing for my family <laughs> This is just yeah, a little bit of right. uh, misunderstanding about uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. You know, Einstein said everything is relative, they misunderstood relatives are everything <laughs> Let me… Uh, let me ask you a hypothetical question. Uh, suppose Hypothetical question, I must announce that before that. Suppose you were made the Prime Minister of this country for one month, how will you change things? See, there are enough instruments in the democratic process. Making me or anybody a Prime Minister for one month is a cruel thing. Okay, for five years? Yes <laughs> <laughs> So you admit that one month is not sufficient? No, I, because I one understand. month is a very cruel joke. It doesn't matter who. Who comes to power for one month, he can't do anything in a nation as diverse as India. To get this nation moving, you need to understand this, you cannot move this nation with policy, with rules. You can only move this nation 
When anything that you want to achieve in this country, you make it a movement. If you do not make it a movement, if people do not emotionally connect to that, no rules, no policy is going to work in this country. It is only people who have been implanted from somewhere, who have not grown up with Indian people, who do not understand this. They think if you make a rule, everything is going to work. This is not Switzerland. If you announce in the notice board, everybody will follow. Mm. <laughs> Here you have to make a movement out of it. You have to make emotionally… people connect emotionally to what needs to be achieved. If you are not able to do that, nothing is ever going to happen. So, whoever becomes the prime minister, I don't want to imagine myself there. Okay. What do you think should be done? It can be very easily done. There are examples of states which are going leaps and bounds ahead. If Absolutely. you saw Bihar just ten years ago, it was just… I've driven through Bihar just wanting to see what Bihar is. It was… it just looked like Afghanistan, mm. large parts of it. Correct. Today things are happening. Absolutely. Wonderful things are happening. Just one man. Things are happening in Gujarat, just one man. Absolutely. So can't we produce twenty-five men or women like that in this country? for every state? Are we so important that we cannot produce twenty-five human beings with some integrity who will do something straight for this nation? And today you don't have to do much. India is sitting on a boom time. You just have to just manage a few things and let it happen, that's all. You just have to see that economic process do not go out of control. You just have to manage that, you don't have to do anything. It's boom time, the whole world is looking towards you. The only two economies everybody is banking on is right now China, China and, and India. India. India is better equipped because it's a democracy, because all the numbers are scrutinized, but what is in China cannot be scrutinized. So many people are very suspicious and fearful because it's supported by the government. India has a proper corporate structure, India have a, has a reliable uh, stock market which is a reading, Indian market is open, you can study what you want, you know where you're putting your money. So definitely India would be a natural destination for every investor in the world. Only thing is they're afraid of our… System. Corruption, not the system. They like our system. Our corruption… Corrupt system. System is not corrupt. Corruption. Corruption. The reason <laughs> It's the people who he are manning it. He has a way it. of making me say things that he wants me to no, say. No, <laughs> no, the people who are manning it, people who are manning it are the problem. But how do we find, find them? You mentioned two states, you mentioned Gujarat and you mentioned Bihar. And strangely they are not the states which, which we have in the center. So how do we… are we politically corrupt, politically completely bankrupt? Uh, how do we do that? Uh, means no, no, it's no. A, it, is, it is only because common people or not participating in the democratic Correct. process. Yes. Participating in the democracy process does not just mean once in five years you ca cast your vote. Most people don't even do that. But I'm saying even if you do that, that is not enough. Democracy is a… is an active sport, it's not a spectator sport. You can't sit back and say, let somebody do democracy. Democracy means you are the boss, you can't sleep on it. You have to be active to everything around you. If you do not bring that consciousness in people, that awareness and activism in people, it will not work. At the same time, for everything you protest, for everything you call a band, for everything, you know, our, it's our culture, people have understood the technology of how to stop the nation, band, hartal. But how to run the nation, it's a different technology. If you want to become a neta tomorrow, you don't have to create anything, do you understand? All you have to do is, I'm sure you have enough fans in Mumbai, take thousand people and block the ceiling. It's a new road. That's it. Just block it, you will become a neta. You don't have to build the ceiling to become a neta. If you build, you will be in lots of trouble. If you block it, you are there.